Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 315. What's going on, everybody? So, we got ourselves another slow day in Jeffrey Epstein news. But that's cool. I have an article that I had archived for just a purpose like this. Now, we know that there's going to be days when we don't have too many uh, news stories and where there's not much going on in the case, right? So we'll use those days to go back and add some context, talk about other aspects of the case, and maybe add a little more meat to the bone. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to talk about how Jeffrey Epstein's arrest back in July was just a look inside of the window at the bigger problem that is human trafficking. This is an issue that is affecting every corner of the globe, no matter your continent, no matter your country, this is an issue. And I don't think that in the year 2020, pressing into 2021, that there should be any form of slavery anywhere in the world, folks. I think that we should all be free to make our own decisions and live our own lives and chase our own dreams. But unfortunately, for millions of people and children around the world, that's not the case. They aren't chasing their dreams the way me or you are. They aren't waking up every day with things to look forward to. Instead, they're caught up in a never-ending cycle of abuse until their captors decide that they are no longer worth the trouble. And that's just the sad facts of the situation. And that's why when I talk about the unnamed girls in the Jeffrey Epstein case and wonder what happened to them, what we're going to hear in in, in this article is one of the reasons why. You know, it's nothing for a trafficking ring to kill one of these girls that are being trafficked by them if they don't comply with orders. And again, please remember, I'm not saying that's what happened in this Epstein case. I don't know, right? None of us know for sure. That's what we're doing here. That's why we're here every day trying to put the pieces together. But me, I don't feel comfortable leaving stones unturned. I don't feel comfortable not chasing leads. And when we already know that trafficking rings around the world have used the behavior of, let's say, getting rid of, girls that they find are non-compliant or not useful anymore, well, wouldn't that be a question that we would have to ask about a trafficking ring that has been involved in at least literally thousands of, of girls trafficked according to reports from numerous continents? How hard would it be to track down a girl from Belarus or Estonia or Lithuania? Do you really think that they have a bunch of um, systems in place, like in Western countries, databases where these girls are put through and they have an FBI agency that's looking for them or whatever. That's not happening. These countries are lucky that they can eat food at night for the most part. So when I talk about the unnamed girls, that's what I'm talking about, right? What about the girls that had no family or nobody that's come forward? When we hear that it's been literally thousands of girls and we have only heard from a hundred or so, then you have to wonder, at least I have to wonder, what in the hell happened to the rest of those girls? And when you start looking into sex trafficking rings and you see what happens to these girls on a a larger uh larger than you would want to see number, well, you you have to ask those questions. And that has definitely been a path I've been on for a very long time with the Jeffrey Epstein case, and especially in New Mexico, after going there myself and seeing how vast it was and seeing how desolate it was. And the old adage came up in my mind as I was driving there. uh, And I I couldn't help but keep thinking this, something that I would think about all the time when I'd be driving from Vegas to California. When you There's there's a portion when you're driving from Vegas to California on the I-15 that some people call the largest graveyard in the world because of all of the bodies that are buried out there. Nobody's ever going to find them. And it's very comparable on the ride from Santa Fe 
to the right off to the right to San, uh, um, Stanley, where Zorro Ranch is. It's a very similar um, landscape. So you know that was one thing that was crossing that crossed my mind for sure when I was driving down to Zorro Ranch. And again, there's no evidence that that occurred, right? There's nobody that's come forward and said any of these girls were killed or anything like that. But when you look at the overall story of sex trafficking. And you understand that that is something that occurs very frequently in these other trafficking rings. I would have to think that it is something that is very possible that it could have occurred at some point or at some in some capacity. Because there are just way too many unanswered questions as far as these unnamed girls go. So that leads us into our article today. Our article is from theconversation.com, and this article was authored by Larissa Christensen, Nadine McKillop, Suzanne Raymond McHugh, and it was authored on July 12th of 2019. Headline, Jeffrey Epstein's arrest is the tip of the iceberg. Human trafficking is the world's fastest growing crime. And when you read a headline like that, you say to yourself, holy shit, how is that even possible? The fastest world, the, the fastest growing crime in the world? With all the, the different licks people have out there, all the different ways people have to make dough, this is the fastest growing crime in the world? And if that doesn't depress you, if that doesn't make you sick, I don't know what will, folks. Because from where I'm sitting, the trade, the being part of the trade of human flesh is so much worse than being involved in drugs that I can't even begin to explain to you how much worse I think it is. And yet here we are with these drug dealers and these cartel members and organized crime members. And look, don't get it, don't get it twisted. I'm not sticking up for them. They're reprehensible people, right? No doubt about it. But why should they be getting hit with RICO charges and a guy like Epstein not getting hit with them? Because at the end of the day, we know that Jeffrey Epstein was not doing this alone. And we know that Ghislaine Maxwell was not doing this alone. Jeffrey Epstein, a powerfully connected American financier, pedophile, is facing charges of sex trafficking, bringing underage girls as young as 14 years old into homes in various locations across the U.S. And we even have reports from 11 to 12 years old down in the Virgin Islands, right? So this is a man whose disgusting proclivities range from about 11 or 12 up to about 16, 17-ish, and then he started to lose interest, right? He reportedly had a network of more than 50 50 victims, and evidence against him included hundreds of lewd photographs of girls and young women. Well, times that 50 by about 20, and that's probably a closer number, right? Accusations against high-profile high people such as Epstein temporarily raise awareness of this significant human rights violation. But regardless of the outcome of this case, the ugly truth is, this is just the tip of the iceberg. And it really is. But I will say this, it's a catalyst for me. I would have never, ever, 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 let me tell you folks and be very honest with you, I wouldn't even looked at these kind of articles prior to jumping into this case. It was not in my wheelhouse. It was not something I was really interested in. Maybe subconsciously, I found it so abhorrent that I wanted nothing to do with it. But that's not an excuse that cuts it anymore, right? So what, we're all going to stand on the sidelines if we're uncomfortable with something? Let me tell you what. The greatest day in my life is when I learned how to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And when that happens, you really start to learn that you most certainly do not have all of the answers and your worldview from inside of your echo chamber is misguided. And that was one thing that the Epstein case did for me when it came to human trafficking. It really opened up my eyes and forced me to take note of the issue. And once you take note of it and once you start understanding what's going on, if it doesn't disgust you, 
and it doesn't make you want to take action in one way or the other, be it, you know, sharing posts or talking to your friends about it or writing your lawmakers or making sure, more importantly, you're voting in quality people on a local level, then I don't know what will, folks. Child sex trafficking is a critical issue affecting more than one million children worldwide, many of whom are left to suffer in silence. And for those clowns running around talking about, oh, well, these people talking about Save Our Children, this is a right-wing conspiracy. Those people should probably shut their yaps because they have no idea what they're talking about. This is a worldwide problem. More than one million children suffering, left alone with nobody to speak out on their behalf. And you mean to tell me you think this is a topic that should be politicized? Probably should chiggity check yourself if that is what you think about when you see that hashtag. Some consider human trafficking as the world's fastest growing crime. Worldwide, about 20% of trafficking victims are children, with up to 100% in some regions. So that's 20%. So two out of every 10 trafficking victims is a child. And the other eight are someone's daughter, someone's mother, someone's sister, someone's loved one. They most certainly don't deserve to be caught up in some effing human trafficking ring where they're treated as a commodity or as a piece of cattle. Sex trafficking is the most common form of human trafficking. Globally, an estimated 4.8 million people are forced into sexual exploitation. Think about that. 4.8 million people right now as we speak, as we're sipping on our Starbucks, as we're eating our dinners and watching the baseball game and preparing for the two knuckleheads to get up there and WWE wrestle debate for us. 4.8 million people are forced into sexual exploitation. So imagine what's going on in their lives right now. Pretty pathetic and sick to think about it, huh? Especially when we're the most powerful nation in the world, supposedly, and we let this occur right here in our own country. And this industry produces $99 billion in profits a year for traffickers. How is that even possible? Well, it's not possible if people don't participate. And how many people do you see these six sons of bitches from America or England or Australia going to these third world countries to try and meet up with little kids? I can't tell you how many documentaries I've watched about it, how many sick bastards are showing up in these countries. Like these children don't matter because what, they're from a different country because they look different than you? And then these same sons of bitches will put their wedding ring back on and go up to their hotel room and FaceTime their wife and their kids. I don't have the answers, folks. I honestly, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know how to stop it or what we can do besides keep raising your voice about it. Keep talking about it. Make sure that this is an issue that our politicians understand we will not accept anymore. This isn't your basic theft. This isn't your basic greed or steering a contract in the direction of their brother-in-law. Our politicians are literally... Literally standing by while people are put into modern day slavery. Who is targeted? Most child trafficking victims are girls and often between the ages of 12 to 16. Although when children under 12 are the victims, boys have been found to outnumber girls in some samples. I can, you know, this, it's just so, so heavy, right? This kind of shit is so heavy and so gross to think about. I don't even have children. But I have little cousins. I have friends who have kids. And let me tell you what. Something ever happened to one of those kids? Someone ever kidnapped them? I would make Liam Neeson look like a nice guy. Okay? I don't have very much money. But what I do have are a certain set of skills. And I am not kidding. I would not rest until I found my loved one or found the person who kidnapped them. And I am not kidding you when I say that. It is so abhorrent to think about. 
I don't I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if it was my child. How could you possibly go to sleep every night knowing your child has been kidnapped and more than likely, if they aren't killed already, are forced into this kind of life? And yet we have our petty squabbles on a daily basis. I don't know, folks. I think we're missing the big picture here. I really think we're missing the big picture here. And we're letting these devious sons of bitches that write the laws that let this occur divide us way too much. While trafficking often implies transporting across borders, trafficking can very often be a domestic matter with little to no transportation. For example... One study found more than 80% of sex trafficking incidents in the United States involved U.S. citizens. Imagine that, huh? You think our overlords care about the poorest amongst us? They've proven that time and time again that they don't, huh? So why would you think that it would be people from outside of the United States? We don't mean anything to them. The only time you matter to them is once every four years or once every two years when they want your vote. Then it's all party over. Let's go back and make sure that the people that really funded us to get here, let's make sure that they are happy and we'll just shit on our constituents. And the cycle repeats over and over and over again because we allow it to. A child can become a victim of commercial sexual exploitation when they're vulnerable. And some of the risk factors include... Substance abuse. Sound familiar? Poverty. Sound familiar? Exposure to family violence or criminality. Check. Running away or told to leave home. Abuse and neglect, including sexual victimization. Involvement in delinquency, poor mental health, and involvement in child protective services. Pretty much every single one of the girls that has come forward in the Epstein case fits that criteria. And the fact that kids in Child Protective Services are so at risk of getting caught up in shit like this really should make you start asking some questions. Is there no accountability? Is that where we're at now? Where there's no accountability for anything? Jeffrey Epstein dies? Bah! The two lowly guards, they're at fault. Same shit goes on here. Child Protective Services, these kids go missing. Do these caseworkers, do they get sanctioned? Do they lose their jobs? Do they face criminal penalties? Maybe they should. While there are some common risk factors, it's important to note that there is no definitive set of risk factors or single risk factor that can determine whether a child will become a victim. That is for sure. All right? One of these sick, disgusting bastards is out and they have an opportunity to snatch a kid, you better believe they're going to do that. And this isn't something that just happens every once in a while. This is a prevalent situation, folks. There are very, very, very scary, sick people living amongst us. How are victims recruited? Traffickers may recruit victims through guerrilla guerrilla pimping. This involves aggression, threats, and violence to engage and enslave the victim. I bet you you see more of this in like a gang setting, right? You have a gang of criminals and they use coercion and threats and violence to force a woman into sexual servitude. Whereas Jeffrey Epstein and his friends, they had money. They could do it with promises and gifts. When you see it on the street level here, you see, I guess they call it guerrilla pimping. That's a new term to me, but it definitely makes sense. In other instances, recruitment through what appears to be kindness and compassion is shrouded in manipulation from food, money, shelter, or drugs. That is where our case falls into, right? The category that our case falls into. This is referred to as finesse pimping. And that makes sense as well. That's really what it is. They're finessing them, right? And that it's funny that they use that word because that's the word I like to use all the time about Jeffrey Epstein in New Mexico, how he was finessing the politicians and the lawmakers. So finesse pimping, according to this article, is the, the, the mode that Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell used. These exploited children, often victim to abuse and neglect in childhood, are promised shelter, love, and protection. And some children might fall victim to survival sex with no other option to attain food, money, shelter, or drugs. And you see this shit a lot, right? I can't even imagine 
how these kids on the streets, especially now with the homeless people all over the place, are are being able to live and 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 how they're handling themselves. There has to be a huge, huge rate of child abuse and and um, uh, sexual abuse for homeless teens. I, I that's something that is probably a, a a avenue to traverse down at some point, right? Because I can only imagine what it's like. It doesn't matter where you drive in Las Vegas, the richest parts of town to the poorest. There are homeless people all over the place. A lot of them are women. And I've seen a lot of kids too, or what appear to be young kids, teens. So I can only imagine what the hell's going on out there. Traffickers quite frequently use recruiters to identify vulnerable youth. While these recruiters might be other adults, victims themselves can eventually become involved in the recruitment. Friends may recruit peers into the commercial sex trafficking population through their, so- their social networks. And we saw a lot of that, right? We saw it with Haley Robson. We saw it with some of the other girls. It was normalized to them. They were brought in as kids, 15, 16. And then they were set free to go bring in other friends. In fact, some research has found almost half were recruited by friends into the commercial exploitation industry as opposed to adults preying on on susceptible youth. Recruitment to the industry by friends is particularly dangerous as youth are less suspecting of their peers compared with adults. And that's why it was so devious the way Epstein and Maxwell had their shit set up, right? Other kids recruiting kids. And it gave them a bit of a, a, bit of a buffer. They had a bit of a buffer and they had some distance between themselves and the actual crimes. And they thought it was just going to work like that forever. Well... They thought wrong. In some instances, youth involved in sex trafficking will even be given financial incentives to introduce their friends to the exploitation population. Epstein allegedly used this tactic, paying his victims to recruit other girls 100%. As a consequence, victims can suffer a long-term physical, psychological, and even neurological trauma which can continue for their whole lives. I really hope that the people dispersing the compensation fund have read this article. I hope they understand that this isn't something you just get over like some people think it is. These girls are suffering lifelong trauma because of this. I can't even imagine what sort of moron would sit around and act like, oh, well, they wanted it. They don't deserve any money. What sort of inept barbarian Barrack ogre has that, that that sort of thought process. I mean, I'm I'm pretty alpha when it comes to males, right? I'm certainly not uh you know sitting around sipping lattes with my goofy hat on or anything like that. But I mean, come on already. There's a point where you become a barbarian, and uh, barbaric behavior is just unacceptable. And the impacts of the trauma can also affect others, including families and wider society. Why can't victims just leave? And I've heard this one too. Why didn't you just leave? Just get up and leave. Like it's that easy. Once recruited, it's difficult to leave. Experts have drawn parallels between the theoretic constructs of human trafficking to that of intimate partner violence in terms of power and control. Same thing. That's exactly what it's like, right? Even though you know shit's effed up, even though you know things are not good, a lot of these girls have nowhere else to go. So what are they supposed to do? In particular, the victim may be isolated as well as controlled emotionally and physically. The victim can easily become entangled through such controlling techniques or even through traumatic bonding. This is where the victim has appreciation towards the trafficker for being able to live coupled with entrenched fear. And that's what happened to all these girls, right? All of these girls had traumatic bonding with Jeffrey Epstein. He abused them, but he made it like it was normal. And he gave them money. And, oh, look, I really care about you. Meanwhile, he's abusing these young little girls. And none of it's okay. In some instances... 
A victim recruited uh, recruited through finesse pimping might feel indebted and obliged to stay with the trafficker. And yeah, we've that's exactly the story we have seen play out in this Jeffrey Epstein case. Other tactics to, ma- to, ma- to maintain control can include food deprivation or forced drugs. And older victims have reportedly been threatened that if they don't cooperate or if they don't earn a certain sum of money that day, the victim's child will be sold. These are the sort of scumbag morons that we're dealing with, folks. These people need to be purged off of the face of Earth. Quick trials, harsh penalties. The ability to maintain total control over the victim may also be compounded by their vulnerability to manipulation, for example, by virtue of age, and potentially complicated by substance use problems, learning disabilities, and poor mental health. And again, that's what they look for, right? The most vulnerable amongst us are the targets. And I don't know about you folks out there, but me, I hate bullies. I despise bullies. And in fact, I have a pension for giving bullies that three-piece. And that's what these people are at their core. They are bullies. They look for people weaker than them. And then they take advantage of those people using their power and their prestige and their so-called connections to polite society as a shield for their disgusting behavior. With sex traffickers being strategic in even their recruitment and ability and ability to entangle the victim physically and psychologically, it's not difficult to see how victims become entrapped. It's not, right? And, uh, you know, I, again, I had no idea how deep these problems were. I had no idea a million or more children and 4.8 million people and all of these crazy big-ass numbers that are just mind-blowing. And how we as a society have let it get to this point, I will never understand it. But what I can say is is moving forward, I know me personally, I plan on holding my local politicians responsible for all of this. If I send you to Washington, D.C., I expect you to look out for the most vulnerable amongst us in my state and in the country as a whole. And to tell you the truth, the world as a whole. And I think that if we all do that, if we all hold our congressmen and women and our senators accountable at a state level, then there won't be any more of this loophole writing and garbage nonsense. Because I don't have any other answers, folks, right? That's the only thing I can think of. And I plan on doing that here in Las Vegas. I plan on voting for people who actually get it. I plan on voting for people who are not scared to dip their toes into controversial topics. But really what I'm looking for are people who are willing to put words away and instead kick shit into action. If you'd like to contact me, you could do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. All right, everybody, I hope you all have a great night. I will be back tomorrow.